chapter 15. By the time we get to chapter 15, I, I've skipped over all the plagues, the gnats, and the roaches, um, and, and I, I'm coming to <coughs> 15. They have been freed, so to speak. They're exiting slavery, generations of slavery in Egypt. They're heading out, and um, they're not going to Laguna Beach. They're going to the Mojave. And, uh, and so we read this. Then Moses led Israel from the Red Sea, and they went into the desert of Shur. For three days they traveled in the desert, 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 without finding water. When they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Marah. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? <laughs> then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He drew it into the water, and the water became sweet. So, not only does he get them in trouble, he does provide them uh, at least what looks like an initial freedom to head out into the desert. And no sooner that they get what their prayer answered, they're free. They've been praying for generations to be free. And they go, we're thirsty. Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? This is, this is what this story is. You're free now. Be free. <laughs> Why do you quarrel with me? The people were thirsty. They grumbled and they said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt? To make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? <laughs> they are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Walk on ahead of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand and staff with which, you, with which you struck the Nile and go. And I will stand there before you by the rock of Horeb, strike the rock in water, and will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? That is a very important story in Moses' life. But God provides. Once again, God's provided them freedom. God's provided them something they didn't have several weeks before. And now they're moving off and to live into their freedom. And so Moses, by this time in the Exodus story, as they're moving out into freedom and learning freedom, a new thing happens. Is Clearly Moses is in charge. He's learning daily the challenges of, of leadership and the obligations and the difficulties of leadership. And one of them is this particular lesson in chapter 18. The next day Moses took his seat to serve as judge for the people. And they stood around him from morning till evening. And when his father-in-law saw all that Moses was doing for the people, he said, What is this you're doing for the people? Why do you alone, emphasis on alone, sit as judge while all these people stand around you from morning till evening? Moses answered him, because the people come to me to seek God's will. I am good. Whenever they have a dispute, it's brought to me and I decide between the parties and I inform them of God's decrees and laws. Moses' father-in-law replied, what you are doing is not good. You and these people who have come to you will only wear yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot handle it alone. Listen now to me, and I will give you some advice, and may God be with you. You must be the people's representative before God, and bring their disputes to Him. Teach them the decrees and laws, and show them the way to live, and the duties they are to perform. But select people. Select capable men from all the people. 
men who fear God, trustworthy men who hate dishonest gain and appoint them as officials and over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Skipping to verse 24, Moses listened to his father-in-law. We can just stop reading our Bible right there. <laughs> and he did everything he said. Moses is challenged by Jethro to empower. Remember your job. You can't do it all. Uh, you need to empower others to do it. There needs to be some job descriptions going on here. This is a Presbyterian church. The word, of course this is Hebrew, but the word here for appoint somebody to be put in charge is the word or could be very well the word Presbyterian. Appoint an elder. Empower somebody to be a representative of the larger task and then send them into ministry because it's too big. And Moses did it. Moses realized he needed a team and he needed to send them into this.